What's going on, everybody? Welcome in to the Wednesday, January 24th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand-Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, $2 billion in subsidies and only two EV stations has opened. Even Stu can do the math on that one. Um, next up on the menu, latest solar and storage project in the U.S. activated. Then we've got an opinion piece up next. Kevin Mooney, the Biden administration's new climate rules could mean big payday for his buddies and burden for American business just as we like it. Next up, Total Energy's Eyes March 2024 restart for uh, date for Denmark's largest offshore natural gas field. Whoop, whoop. And then finally, pay attention to copper before it derails the energy transition. After that, Stu will toss it over to me, and I will quickly cover what's going on in the oil and gas finance market. We saw a lot of non-energy earnings happen today that's really caused markets to skyrocket. Oil prices up about two percentage points, and natural gas also up a little bit. And then we will let you guys get on out of here, finish up your gorgeous Wednesday. As always, I'm Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Go ahead and kick us off, Stu. Hey, let's get rolling to my favorite discussion. $2 billion in subsidies and only two EV station to open. Holy smokes, Batman, Michael. You know, I still can't believe all these years ago, you and I were going, hey, man, that's a couple million dollar deal. That's a big deal. Then we went to, hey, what's a few billion between friends? Now we can't even get a charger installed it's for insane. a couple billion. This poll, uh, this is unbelievable. Uh, the government rollout of EV chargers has been a slow motion affair, and uh, seven point five billion in funding from the twenty twenty one infrastructure porculus bill. Transportation uh, Secretary Pete Buttigieg said, "We have a chance to lead the world in the EV revolution." <laughs> let's go through some of the numbers light v uh half the money will be spent where no one were can be afforded uh let's see ev sales um 1.1 million actually 1.2 uh they the number down here there's 1.7 million evs in the total u.s out of 292 million vehicles that's a percentage rate of 0.58%. <laughs> wow. Gee, yikes. Yeah. Uh, only 6% in the U.S. want EV for their next vehicle. It's not going to happen. That's not, I mean, what's a, it just goes to show you. Anytime the government is investing, there will be overruns. But $2 billion for an EV station. Oh, yeah, I got a hammer. A, this is a $2, $2 billion pin right here, right now. Uh, and it's the insurance that is absolutely going nuts. It goes, what about repairs? What about insurance? Uh, we started the insurance thing uh, several months ago and the, it started really going nuts in um, uh, Europe. Uh, but how fast is eventually? I love that quote. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. All right, let's move to the next one here. <laughs> Largest solar and storage project in the U.S. is now activated. Um, let's go here. If you could imagine this one, it is 1.3 gigawatt, gigawatts of interconnection capacity. Guess what state it's in? Uh, I California. read the article, California. <laughs> <laughs> the energy storage is made up of LG, Kim, Samsung, and BYD batteries. This is a feat of engineering requiring 98 miles of MV wire, over 361 miles of DC wiring, and 120,000 batteries. This is seven by seven mile square area of solar panels. Um, it added uh, unbelievable amount of cost. So the cost per kilowatt hour on this thing, total $1.7 billion. Wait, and it's, per kilowatt hour? No, for the whole thing. Oh. 107 1.7 billion dollars if you bring it into kilowatt per hour i haven't gotten in 
couldn't figure it out out of this. I think they hid that number in here. I'm yeah, wouldn't to, want to th- yeah, no kidding. No. So total, uh, it's just unbelievable. What a boondoggle. Yeah. Just remember, um, what's hilarious is you have to remember this was all debt financing, but they've also got, they've also got JP. I mean, they've got multiple rounds of secured credit facilities, a tax equity bridge facility, a construction and revolving credit of facility with JP Morgan with more tax equity. I mean, it's insane. This will never pay off. No. And it, as soon as you, uh, the guess who's going to get it in the drive through again, it is the consumers. Okay, let's go to the next one. Biden's admin climate rules could mean new big payday for his buddies, burden American for American businesses. This one just drives me nuts. This is with the SEC. Um, let me get down into this one. Uh, Pennsylvania is the second largest net supplier of energy to the other states and the largest exporter of electricity, Tom said. Uh, let's see. Uh, Gordon Tom, senior fellow with Commonwealth Foundation, a free market think tank. Mm-hmm. As such, private companies supporting enterprises that emit carbon dioxide in the production of energy at number in the hundreds and their employees and many thousands imposing costs artificially constructed to advance quasi religious climate ideology and creative ways for the politically connected to make money without producing benefit is viciously economically destructive. <laughs> well, it's hard because what they're referring to is the idea of scope three emissions and exactly. it's really the difference of what's considered downstream and upstream of a company's activity. And if this rule from the SEC is finalized, it would put them in the driver's seat for handing out and legislating amongst the private companies and how they transact with other public firms. And this is the worst part, Michael. The SEC it will cost between four hundred and sixty thousand to six hundred and forty thousand for companies to comply with the new rules during the first year they're in operation. The scope three emissions, Michael, nobody, if you're an EMP operator and they want to start monkey uh, Mickey mousing around and saying, Hey, wait a minute, you got to be a little more uh, aware of the scope one. Ah, I can buy that. Okay. We're starting to get into this. But an EMP operator drilling a well is going to get into scope three operations and be responsible for it when he doesn't make the car. You got to be kidding me. And what's hilarious is, is part of what they talk about in this article is how there's this software that's been built, this carbon accounting software that's now poised to come. I see you, you, you vulnerable. It's poised to come in and provide the solution to manage. Well, guess what? It's full of all ex SEC regulators. It's literally a revolving door for people to get money. It's exact, and they, and not only is it going to be AI, it's going to be AI programmed by the SEC crooks. I mean, this has got graft and corruption written all over it. We just got to, uh, we got to get uh, Grok on it. What is that? Is that uh, Elon Musk's? We got to just make sure Grok gets installed. What's next? Uh, oh, man. I got all work. You can tell I was starting to get foamed up on this one. Total Energy's Mar- eyes March 2024 restart date for Denmark's largest offshore natural gas field. Michael, this is kind of funny because two years ago, Denmark was shutting this down. You and I were sitting there, and I remember it when we were, you were up in Denver, I think, or we we're sitting there talking about, greatest I don't get it. Do what? I was just saying Denver, greatest place in the world. It, it was at one time. And, and when you sit back and think, and then all the people from California moved in. Now, when we sit back and think, uh, Total Energies confirmed its remit notification. Let's go here. Blue Nord's Q3 report uh, on the Tyra two facilities has been executed leak testing and everything else. They're getting ready to rumble on this. This is because, uh, it is incredibly important. This field is huge for the UK and Europe in all these interconnects right now. There's 1400 offshore employees. 
that's a that's a lot in that gas field. Well, and Europe just needs more cheap fuel. Yes. And so where else are you going to go get it? You know, you're going to go burn coal? You're going to go buy it from the Russians? You know, no. you're going to go buy oil from China? No, you might as well just go get it out your backyard. I mean, this is an obvious, an obvious move in order to help maintain what some low levels of, of, of energy costs. Oh, it's it's absolutely the only way that we're going to get to low low carbon uh, is through natural gas. And this is true. Uh, in our, this is a smart move. I, mm-hmm. You and I did not understand why they were taking this offline, but nope. they're not having to reopen it up. All right. Let's go to the last one here. Uh, I think I know a good guy that knows some mo- things about mines. I believe there's a school in Colorado. Oh, yeah. Colorado School of Mines. Pay attention to copper before it derails the energy transition. I don't think there's going to be a transition. Uh, it's going to take a revolution. But the problem is that copper is going to be needed for just electrification of everything. There is a huge... The CEO of Glencore, Gary Nagel, has warned about an impending massive copper deficit. 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 Mm-hmm. Boy, that's a uh, Oklahoma way to talk. And stress that the world is not fully prepared for it. Um, the Blanca II expansion in Chile uh, experienced significant cost overruns and construction delays. We're not going to have it. Uh, construction you have uh uh south america is not going to be the resources where we we're going to need it you're well, just the, the problem is this and this is why i think it's important for somebody to, to hear this from somebody like gary nagel i mean i'm no fan of glencore they're probably one of the more corrupt um large traders in the world you know they're a physical commodities trader and you, know, you right. guys just go look up how much they've paid in fines i think you can we can all look we can all google glencore fines you know they used to you know they used to be you know phil and rich you know uh, uh rich and co and you know we all know what happened there but my point is these guys do have their pulse on the physical commodities market and how they their one their uh orders were stolen all their copper that was an interest. That's a different. That's that's a story we covered a few months ago. But yes. So okay. what 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 things like Glencore, Trafigura, um, right. Avitol, they're physical commodities traders. So what do they do? They take the commodity from somewhere and they bring it somewhere else. Well, what companies like Glencore have now gone out and done is they've gone out and bought the source production. Glencore is really big in the minerals and mining space. Trafigure is a little bit bigger um, when it comes to oil. So along with VTOL, Glencore also does a lot of coal. So they know. But what he's saying is, even if we wanted more coal, more copper, we can't get it because these projects can't get approved. All of the projects that we're currently investing in, High overruns, meaning they're never net. They're, they're they won't necessarily pay out, which means you're never going to get financing. You know, and you know, with on a six and a half on a six. You know, this recent study, Sesco, they found that these large scale projects delayed by an average of four point three to six point three years. That's on top of a seven year production cycle. So you're talking over a over. I mean, it's incredible how long these things. It's a decade and a half to get something like this done. And yet we think we're just going to increase the amount of copper supply by three times to, I mean, you want to talk about getting me worked up. <laughs> I kind of threw that in there intentionally. Let's see, let's see school of mines got his masters. I mean, it's got nothing to do with that. More so that yeah, people are you un. Don't like, you don't like incompetent boobs trying to make an energy transition using copper when they can't even do it right. No, I'm all for I'm all for using copper. I think we just have to be very clear specifically about, okay, if we're going to move into a post fossil fuel world, what does that actually look like? You know, I, I, we were on a call with a client today, Stu, and it cracked me up because you get to sell the dream. You're the politician. You know, right. I actually have to live in reality and make <laughs> things happen. 
So that's where my focus is. It, it was one of the fun because it's true. You know, there are people that are allowed to sell the dream, <laughs> sell the dream of renewals. I'm all for the dream. But now we have to come back and live in reality and figure out, okay, what can we actually do today? And then what are the ste- the actual steps, one foot in front of another, they're going to get us to the end. You're the old uh, boots on the ground kind of guy. Yes, I'm the I am the boots <laughs> on the ground. I am I am infantry. <laughs> Attack that hill. Back to you. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and, and, and move over to finance, guys. We did see overall markets have a pretty decent day, um, really based off the back of earnings coming down. S&P 500 up about a half a percentage point. NASDAQ up about uh, another half a percentage point, mainly off the back of Netflix um, coming in and, and, and having over 260 million subscribers. It's kind of crazy. At some point, they're going to run out of people to buy Netflix. But that's a that's a whole other point. We won't dive into that. Um, oil and gas or uh a dollar index up a quarter of a percentage point. Uh, crude oil actually up about two percentage points relative. I mean, it was kind of choppy all day. At one point, we were up two and a half percentage points. At one day, we were a little below. We ended up the day about three quarters of a percentage point up uh, 74.53 as we record this about 530 central time. Brent oil doing a little bit worse. That's down about two tenths of a percentage point. Mainly what we saw was some supply disruptions going on in Russia. Did that necessarily have anything to do with what what happened on on today's front month curve? A little bit. You know, Ukraine, um, Ukraine's hitting a little drone strike um, on Russia fuel terminal, which, you know, they. Man, they want us. They they're trying to get us to enlist so bad. Um, it's it's unbelievable. Um, John Kidcliffe, partner over at Again Capital, quote: "These are finally concerns in the market that are ab- about genuine supply disruptions after this uh, uh, terminal from Novatek. So, um, as remember, we're also dealing with uh, severe cold weather across the United States, specifically in North Dakota, um, and is hampering other states as well. But over twenty percent of the production in North Dakota is still shut down um, due to." Uh, operational cold weather. That's according to the North Dakota Pipeline Authority. We also saw the API's crude oil inventory guesstimate that will come out as you listen to this on Wednesday. They're forecasting a 6.67 million barrel draw from the strategic petroleum reserves. That's a beats the forecast of a 3 million barrel draw. So very bullish uh, 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 API is on the crude oil inventory stocks on Thursday. We will get natural gas stocks. It's really about all I saw, Stu. We did see Talos come out and up their uh, proposed offering to one billion of their second priority senior secured notes. I love how it's a second priority senior secured notes. So you're still senior secured, but you're second priority. You're not the first priority. You're second priority. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not quite dead yet either. Yeah, you're not. You're not quite dead yet. Um, we were going to be start seeing a lot of earnings roll out, guys. So we are really excited for that. Um, what 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 else you got, Stu? What should people be worried about? Oh, I'm just glad that it's another year before Davos again. It's it's going to be good. Um, again, before we let you guys go, we'll we'll pay the bills here real quick. Check us out. Best way to support the show: www.energynewsbeat.com. The best place um, for all your energy and oil and gas news. All the news and analysis you just heard is via that website: um, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com. Questions at energynewsbeat.com. Great places to uh, get a hold of us or check out our data news combo. We are going to be at NAEP February seventh through the ninth check us out booth 1957 we'll be doing a lot of cool stuff with well database live deal evaluations pecos country operating our friends over there are, are going to be selling the deal Stu, you're going to be there with the three podcasters rt david blackman we got a lot of fun going on we're going to have a a lot of good guests swinging by uh, the lineup's looking great stay tuned if you can get down there 1957 if you cannot well guess what we will be that we you'll be able to see all the content. You will not feel left out at all. Um, it's gonna be fun, Stu. It's gonna be an absolute blast. All right. Well, with that, guys, we'll let you get out of here. Get back to work. Finish up your day. Appreciate you checking us out. World's greatest podcast, Energy News Beat for Stuart Turley. I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks.